Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibe for, yeah, I'm the giant. And this one here is a long one, so I ain't gonna talk too much. This one is Geography Now Spain. Somebody uh, asked me to react to that, and I said, I think I did Spain before. And he said, No, nah, you did a different one about Spain. I, mean, I think maybe I did provinces and flags or something like that. But this one here is Geography Now Spain, just pro Spain. I'm interested to, to see this one because I like Spain. Love to read about Spain and uh, you know everything like that. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna start a series. So, here's what I want you all to do for me help the giant out, help Mr. Giant out. A series that I want to do is uh, foods from countries, from all the different countries and stuff. I'm gonna do one about my country, I'm gonna start it off with that, but uh, I want to go in there and get videos and check out the food and thing because i'm interested in that because that's a major part of the cultures around the world so look out for that one coming but that's youtube and sim simmer all right spain i don't really have to say much you've all heard of this country along with france and italy it is one of the three powerhouse latin countries of europe portugal we love you man you're cool and awesome but like let's be real you're kind of like the mini boss before the okay wait a minute here so a dude getting kind of buffed there or something Looks like he's putting on some muscle or something. I don't know. I'll just stop right there. Anyway, over 500 million people across the world speak Spanish. And if you include the mestizos, a huge chunk of that population have actual descendants and ancestors from Spain. So it's not just language. It's also like genetically Spain got busy and made a big ass family across the world. In any case, welcome to the original kingpin of the Hispanic world, Spain. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Don't forget to get Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. So Spain, everything from the freezing glaciers of Patagonia to the freezing glaciers of Alaska have at some point been imprinted upon by the notorious Spanish seal. And of course, it's always great to have people from the country in the country episodes. And with that, here's Jose and Anna. Say hi to them. Hello everyone. Whoa. Hi. All right, so where are you guys from? I'm Anna and I'm from Valencia. I'm Jose and I'm from Catalonia, from a town called Blanes. Uh oh. Catalonia. Valencia. 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 <laughs> Something about paella. We'll so talk see. about that later. All right, so Ooh, shall we uh, come and No. No? Uh, well, I'll make it up to you guys with some cervezas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> see, I got it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, you're lucky we're here. Because if not, you will be f***ing it up all the time. I didn't expect that word to come this out so of that. Uh, this is the first time I've had two lady there at the same time. <laughs> like we're all like bumping into each other. Oh well. Now we've covered a lot of countries that have loose forms of administrative division within their political regions, but with Spain, I kind of see it like a teacher with a really rowdy classroom. It's like, hey, you kids, you stop that, Galicia. Hey, hey, you stop talking to Portugal. Basque and Navarre. I don't what is what is going on with the geography now, guys? They all are getting all buffed up and stuff. What's going on here? Look at this guy. Arms and thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Rioja, you stop drinking wine. Extra Maduro, do you even e exist? Valencia, hey, you stop burning everything right now. Catalonia is trying to jump out the window. I'm thirsty. Oh, I'm scared, you little. Uh, no, but for real, the people in Spain just know who they are and they own it. And with that, let's go to the animation. All right, Spain is located in Western Europe, taking up about 82% of the Iberian Peninsula, shared with Portugal to the west, the Bay of Biscay to the north, and to the south, subsections of the Mediterranean, known as the Balearic and Alberon Seas and inland the Pyrenees mountains separate them from France Pyrenees. and Andorra. Keep in mind they even have this small little exclave in France called Yivia cut off by about 1.6 kilometers of space to the Spanish border on the N154 highway. Up north on the Bidasoa river Spain also shares an island with France called Isla de los Faisanes or Pheasant Island in which the sovereignty switches every six months. Those aren't the only countries that border them though. Wow. In the southeast That's by La Linea de la Concepcion you find this peninsula Gibraltar which is actually an overseas territory of the UK that they have had since 1713 with the Treaty of Utrecht. In addition, Spain also has the Plazas de Soberania, or Strongholds of Sovereignty, historical places in Northern Africa that date back to the inception of modern Spain in the 15th century and they hold on to. They include the two exclave autonomous cities of Ceuta and Melilla, which are effectively attached to Morocco. In addition, there are also eight other islands and one peninsula known as Peñón de Vélez de la Gomera. The peninsula is divided by a 100 meter wide sand bridge, which makes it one of the the 
shortest international borders in the world. From there, wow. Spain also has two main archipelagos, the Canary Islands off the coast of Morocco, and again, of course, the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean. Due to the positioning of the Canary Islands, this gives Spain two time zones, UTC 0 and plus 1. With that, oh, Spain wow. breaks down a little interesting. The country is classified as a decentralized unitary state in which although sovereignty is vested in one nation, the regional institutions hold their own high degree of self governance and have their own parliaments and presidents. These 17 entities are called autonomous communities or autonomies in short. Ceuta and Melilla are categorized as autonomous cities and have the right to become communities, but so far have not expressed interest in doing so. The capital and most populous city and highest capital in Europe is Madrid in the center of the country. Like Madrid. literally it is. There's even a floor plaque called the Puerta del Sol, which serves as kilometer zero for all the roads and train networks that radiate outwards from the central hub. And of course, Madrid holds the biggest and busiest airport, Adolfo Suarez, Madrid, Barajas International. From there, the second largest city is Barcelona on the Mediterranean coast, where Barcelona. the second busiest airport can be found, places, Barcelona, boy. El Prat International. From there, the busiest shipping port is the port of Argeciras Bay, where over 100 million tons of cargo pass annually. Finally, fun fact, some parts of Spain are actually antipodes of New Zealand, which means they are literally located exactly across the entire planet from each other. So, fun fact, Canary oh. Island are not named after canaries, but rather dogs because of the Latin can. Which means dog. What means dog? Like Sorry. canine. <laughs> that was marginally interesting. Now, we're not going to dive too much into it because it would take forever, but... Why so many autonomous? Well, yeah. historically, Spain had a few major kingdoms before they unified. And this is basically how they separate places that either have a very distinct people group versus places that were are more in sync with Madrid's centralized power. And speaking of which it's forced, Spain is a monarchy. Yes, one of the 12 monarchies of Europe. Basically, most people will say it all started when Isabella de Castile married Ferdinand of Aragon, unifying the two biggest powerhouses of the Iberian Peninsula. Even though they kind of pissed off the Pope because they were second cousins and did not dispensate their marriage, which led them to cursing the Spanish people for all eternity, but then they waited for the next Pope and he dispensated their marriage, so anyway! The point is, after millennia of going through the Phoenicians, Romans, the Suevi, whatever those guys were, Vandals and Alans, Visigoths, the Moors and Umayyads, modernish Spain started to take shape in the 1400s with a reconquista or reconquering. And from there the story gets crazier. How so? You sure you're not bored with all this history stuff? Normally I would be, but all the pictures and the fast meta talk uh, holds my attention and makes me think I'm gonna <laughs> Thank you for revealing yeah. my script writing structure, but anyway, fine, if you insist. After the Reconquista, the sexy Habsburgs slipped into the royal family because that's what they did throughout everybody in Europe. And when their line ended the House of Bourbon, a French dynasty slipped in. And here we are today with Philippe VI and his daughter, Princess Leonor, next in line. In any case, Spain is a travel hotspot. They are literally the second most visited country on earth after France, with more than 83 million people recorded as of 2019. Yes, everybody's interested in Spain. Spain. Has third highest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites at 48. The Autonomy of Andalusia has the most at 7. Now we all know some of the obvious UNESCO sites like... The See, the, the, a lot of people... I'm from a, the island I'm from is Grenada, and a lot of people call it Granada. But it's, it's spelled G-R-E-N-A-D-A there. Okay, I'm, I'm confused a little bit because I know there's Granada, which is in Spain, and then there's Grenada, which is my country. It's spelled with an E there. Okay, hold on. Let me go back a little bit here because I'm a little bit confused. Here we are today with Philippe VI and his daughter, Princess Leonor, next in line. In any case, Spain is a travel hotspot. They are literally the second most visited country on Earth after France, with more than 83 million people recorded as of 2019. It's important to know that Spain has third highest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites at 48. The Autonomy of Andalusia has See, the most... Spell Granada there. Now we all know some of the obvious UNESCO sites, like the Alhambra, the Great Mosque of See, Cordoba, the, the Bougainheim, the Sagrada oh, Familia. A chart, which has been under construction me. for like 130 years. It would take way too long to cover all the UNESCO sites, but here's a list of some non-UNESCO sites you guys suggested we mention in the episode. The Royal Palace in Madrid. Centenil de las Bodegas. Valencia's Arts and Science Districts. Theme parks like Puerto Ventura Ooh. and Parque Warner and Texas Hollywood. The Canary Island. I've never been to a theme pyramids, park. That looked good though. And the Neptune statue. The wooden mushroom thing in Seville. Metropole Parasol. Madrid claims to have the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the world. Cadiz is the 
the oldest city. And fake Germany, Mallorca, and fake UK, Ibiza. And so on. Yeah, that list doesn't even give Spain justice because it's not even a small fraction of the big picture. One part of that picture, though, is the landscape and resources. Which brings us to... So since Spain has territories in Africa, the ocean, and Europe, it's transcontinental, so South America have, like, too. many different landscapes. Like, we even have, have a restaurant that cooks food somewhat, over an they colonized it. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go to the animation. First of all, for the continental part, the country is incredibly mountainous. In fact, the second most mountainous country in Europe after Switzerland. The country has six main ranges, the Betic chain in the south, the Central and Iberian chains in the center, the Cantabrian and Leon chains in the north, and the Pyrenees in the northwest with the border of France and Andorra. In the center, you have the Meseta Central Plateau, a wide highland that stretches wide across the interior. As you can clearly see from space, the northern part of Spain has the most lush green wet zones, and as you head south, the Ooh, country obviously gets great. more dry and arid. In fact, Spain has the only true desert of mainland Europe, the Tabernas Desert. That, that, that's how my country is. You go up in the northern part of the island, it's like lush and green, and the, the, the cocoa plantations are up there, and the spices and all of that are up there. And then where I live on the southern tip of the island, as dry as could be. We don't have a desert, but it's pretty dry down there. Desert located in Andalusia, which holds the highest temperatures in as as Europe at over 40 degrees Celsius in the summer. These mountains are essentially a byproduct of Spain being located right at the confluence of the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, creating a slew of minor rifts and fault lines. This means the southern part of Spain may occasionally experience earthquakes above six on the Richter scale, and certain areas, mostly along the Mediterranean, have extinct volcanoes. The most active volcanic area of the country, though, would actually be the Canary Islands, which lie on an interplate volcanic region on the African plate. Geologists mostly agree that the islands were created by the plates moving over a mantle hotspot, which bubbled up out of the ocean, much like how the Hawaiian islands were formed. Speaking of islands, the highest point of the country isn't even on the Iberian Peninsula, but rather the Canary Islands, part of the larger sub-region known as Macaronesia, with Mount Teide, which is actually the third highest volcano in the world from its base. Back to the mainland, though, the highest mountain on continental Spain would be Muracen, at nearly 3,500 meters high. From there, the longest river, shared with Portugal, is the Tagus, or Tejo. However, the longest river entirely in Spain is the Ebro. Now, most of the inland bodies of water are reservoirs blocked up by dams on rivers. However, the largest natural freshwater lake would be Lake Sanabria in the northwest. Finally, Spain has three main climate zones on the continental part. The areas in the south have a warm, dry Mediterranean climate. The central Meseta Plateau has hot summers and cold winters. And the north Cantabrian mountains have a maritime climate with the most rain year-round and snowfall in the winter. So, oh, an extra wow. side note, after Malta, Spain is the sunniest country in Europe, like 200 60 days a year. That's hot. Yeah, because yeah, every time I think of Spain, I think of <laughs> now sunshine. With all I don't know why. Lands, Spain hosts a wide range of flora and fauna, differing by region. For example, the Canary Islands, you have the black sand beaches and the ancient tropical Lora Silva. It's only found in Macaronesia. Otherwise, on the peninsula, you have everything ranging from green hills that look like a skull. Is it me or is it every time the, 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 the horse try to say something in Sp <laughs> Spanish? <laughs> The two Spanish-speaking people smile. <laughs> in the north to the shrubby rocky arizona like deserts of the south within these wide ranged zones you have tons of natural treasures like caves canyons and even a river that flows orange and red agriculture wise they are the second largest producer of wine after italy and the largest producer of olive oil in the I world that. Fun I'm just being when silly. they cook only about 5% like of spanish homes have direct gas lines installed and the rest of like them have gas tanks to get drunk, right though. yeah, yeah. bombona now we all know that despite having the 13th largest nominal gdp in the world World, Spain has had quite a reputation for its rather, how can I put this? Recessive tendencies? <laughs> <laughs> yes, during the financial crisis, Spain was hit hard for about six years during 2008, and in 2014, they reached the height at about 27.2% unemployment. There Whoa! are a lot of factors that went into this, but it kind of went... How could we grow our economy? We need to build a lot of stuff. Okay. What's the problem? The banks. What if we just let the banks report she what they wanted different. and not regulate them as much? That's a great idea. Nothing could go wrong. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> And it did. Perfect storm. And due to this lack of accountability, experts speculate that somewhere upwards to one-fifth of the total GDP is somehow tied in with the undisclosed transaction industry black market, second only to Italy. No proud of that. You guys probably have a lot to say about that. No surprise, Spain? <laughs> Galicia. Is known for being the main port of entry for the European cocaine trade. A fun little fact, did you guys know that over 90% of euros that are transacted in Spain have trace amounts of cocaine on them? <laughs> 
90? Like 90? Over 90 percent, yes. There was wow. a study in Valencia's science community. But anyway, off of that. Spain is the fifth largest producer of wind energy in the world. We even have the world's largest renewable energy operator, Iberdrola. We are the eighth largest automobile producer in the world and second largest manufacturer in Europe after Germany. We even have some of the domestic brands like Seat. Which is actually a subsidiary of Volkswagen, but let them have that one. And the incredibly rare limited produce an expensive GTA Spano. What else is rare in this country? Some of the animal species. And with that... Yeah, I look at all these little fancy cars, but my giant butt won't be able to sit in that bad boy. My knees would be up on my forehead. Looks good, though. Here's Gary Harlow to explain. Right, it's Gary Harlow here. In Europe, Spain and Italy usually rank in the top two in regarding biodiversity. I mean, they've got tropical forests to desert, so there's lots of wildlife real estate. The country hosts 16 national parks, the largest one being the Sierra Nevada in the south. Like Portugal, they share the same type of famous Iberian animals here, like the Spanish ibex and the wild boar. However, they're known for the Spanish big five, the bearded vulture, the Iberian lynx, the Iberian wolf, the imperial eagle, and the Eurasian brown bear. The national animal, however, is a bull. And some might say the Hispanic lion. Some historians claim that they might have inhabited southern Europe. It's in dispute. Lots of reptiles are endemic too, especially on the island regions. The Canary Islands have about five native species of gecko. Blah, 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 blah. It was a very good oh, impression some of those of on the country. island too. Otherwise, as a country that's in the path of migratory birds from Africa to southern Europe, there's over 630 bird species. Whoa. Speaking of migration, I've got to migrate out here, fading into the distance. Thanks, Gary. Now we're about to talk about the food of Spain, but before we do, you have to understand there's a few things. What is food culture in Spain to you guys? What does that mean? What does it entail? Every meal kind of blends into the what? following meal. Next one. <laughs> there's like a whole system, right? Mm -hmm. It starts with breakfast, maybe some churros and chocolate and then uh, what have un aperitivo and then you have lunch and lunch normally ends up with what we call sobremesa that it's like just talk but you stay at the table and you stay at the table you don't have to go out of the, of the bar or even if you're in a house and then merienda which is Ooh. a little snack we have in the afternoon before dinner and so then... that's why we have dinner at 10 p.m it just keeps going. Never, never stop. stop. Never stop. We eat and then, and then eat again and then maybe go, you know, dancing or something. <laughs> while you're dancing, you also eat. You gotta do flamenco with some... Probably. Fun fact, Spain is one of the countries in the world that has more bars per citizen. And you can even get beer at McDonald's, right? Yes. Yeah, true. Yeah, that was so important when I came here. You know, anyway, and with that, here's a... Uh, some... I, I had a friend, uh, well, I, I was at... <laughs> this was a while back. I was uh, at, at the, one of the immigration offices and this guy was in there with somebody and he was telling me that uh, in Alaska they sell like whiskey and stuff at the Kentucky Fried Chicken because it was so cold there. He was a teacher there uh, back in the 70s, he said. He was a teacher there. And uh, yeah, you could go into the, you know, the fast food restaurants and get whiskey and stuff. I guess they to warm themselves up and thing. Some food stuff with, uh, oh, guess who's back? Noah. Boom. Prior to the 15th century, Europeans had no idea that things like chocolate, corn, tomatoes, potatoes, avocados, and sugar even existed. Through the Spanish trade routes, the rest of the world was introduced to these items, and now you can have things like pizza and fries. Great items. In any case, every region of Spain has a different style of cuisine, and the gastronomy is top-notch, world-renowned. We don't have time to explain them all, but some dishes you guys, Spanish geographer peeps, said that every Spaniard will most likely have access to include things like gazpacho, terethnos, churros, coquetas, bachato, cochinillo, arroz a la thamara, I don't even meet meat and that stuff's looking good. Idewa, cocido, and tortilla. This is not the same as a tortilla in Latin America, though. This is a potato and egg dish. And probably oh. the most world-renowned dish, paella, originated Ooh, in paella, Valencia. Man. They are oh, this is bad. The way that it is you don't good. understand. You all have to try this paella if you haven't tried it. Stuff is good. Real good. Yeah made. They hate it when this happens. Hey, can I have some of that paella? I've heard so much about it. Yeah, sure. It comes with extra mussels and shrimp because that's paella. It does? Yeah. Okay. Sure, whatever. Just take it. The true way to make it is either with rabbit or chicken. Otherwise, Valencians will call all the imposters arroz con cosas or rice with things. Well, that's all I got for you today. 
Until next time. Don't eat paella is good. in Madrid or Barcelona. Puerto Ricans but could make some good paella. The one, go to Valentin. Probably after this, many people is going to want to kill me. I just bury myself. Fun fact, uh, Sherry was also invented here, as was the Molotov cocktail, which played a huge role in the Spanish Civil War. Well, let's talk about the Spanish people now, shall we? We shall. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different types of people in Spain and they all kind of have their own thing going on. In a way, we have this kind of quiet acknowledgement that unity doesn't mean uniformity. What do you guys think? Like, do you guys generally get along? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, but... Yes? <laughs> yes. There's like these stereotypes, things that, oh, he probably is this way because he's from this place, or mm. he's probably, you know? I'll say yeah. when I've met Spanish people outside of Spain, we all love Spain and love everyone. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's just when we're in Spain, we love to, you know, talk <laughs> to each other. <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, with that, let's talk about the people of Spain in the graph. First of all, Spain has about 48 million people and is the fifth most populous country in Europe and has the highest life expectancy in the OECD countries. The country is made up predominantly by people that identify as native Spaniard at about 88%. Keep in mind, this label is very broad and pretty much pertains to a wide range of people with different physical traits, but mostly with a South European Mediterranean background in their racial makeup. Geneticists also have determined that the average Spaniard, especially in the South, has around 5% North African ancestry due to the Moorish conquests that took over the country for seven centuries. The remaining 12% of the country is made up of various immigrant groups that have settled over the centuries, the largest ones being Latin Americans at about 5%, North Africans and Eastern Europeans at about 2% each, and the remaining 3% from other places around the world like Asia and whatever. All right, so the official language of Spain is shocker. Spanish, but specifically Castilian or Castellano Spanish. Yeah, of course we have a uh, Spain Spanish dialect, which sounds a bit different than Latin American Spanish. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, most Latin American Spanish is heavily influenced by the Andalusian dialect of Spanish, as many people from those areas moved and migrated to the Americas. Long story short, what's the easiest way to piss off a Spaniard? Vale, voy a empezar mi nuevo proyecto en mi nuevo ordenador. Elige el idioma inglés, no. Francés, no. Español. ¿Alguien me puede explicar por qué está español con la bandera mexicana? ¿Alguien podría explicarme por qué? Porque el español de Europa es el español que no Hey, it's not Mexico's fault they became a big deal in the Hispanic world. Anyway, on top of that, despite Spanish being the national language, they have three other regionally co-official languages that are allowed to be publicly used and published alongside Spanish. So we have Catalan, Galician, Basque. But Basque is a language, like it's its old age. Historically, no one knows where it comes from and doesn't have anything to do with Latin or any other language. There's also other <gasps> minority Romance languages like Asturianese and Aragonese, but very few people speak them and they don't really pursue to officiate them. And there's other offshoot languages like Ladino, spoken by the Sephardic Jewish community. The coolest language fact though is that on the island of Gomera in the Canary it's Islands, the cool of all the cultures kind of go in there and speak the language, language completely composed of whistles. Here's a clip if you want to hear some. I didn't know that. You didn't even know that. Yeah, oh, we're all learning. Yeah, we could talk about language stuff in Spain all for hours. It's crazy, but we got to move on. Historically, the Catholic faith played a huge role in our uh, identity, despite the fact that today only about two thirds of the country, to some degree, might say that they are very less nominally identify as Catholic. And the less of the 20% of the population goes to church. But for where it's worth, we have the Camino de Santiago, one of the largest Catholic pilgrimages Whoa. in the world. The interesting thing, though, is that there is noticeable traces of Maurice Arabic influence as well. Everything from architecture and even the names of cities, for example, if they start with Al. It's even how Andalusia got its name from the Arabic Al Andalus. And today there's even noticeable words borrowed from Arabic in the Spanish language like Tata or Azúcar. That was great. Right. Now, in regards to Spain's impact on the world, it's nothing short of it. At one point, we had 35 colonies across the world. And today, there are 19 sovereign Spanish-speaking countries, plus Puerto Rico, that all have a story rooted from Spain. Yeah, you guys have a long history of Latin America. What do they think of What do they think of Spanish people? They love Europe in general. It's like, oh, Europe. So, I don't know. But at the same time, they have some other thoughts about that. Like, we have lazy... <laughs> a lot of people, especially in South America, that think of us as very structured or like what Spanish people think of Germans almost. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Which is really weird. Wow. 
Wow. So they kind of think you guys are like the Germans of the Hispanic world. This, yeah. This, yeah, but then in you... This stuff is just bouncing around. I like how everything sort of correlate in there. So let's correlate as humans too. <laughs> I had to say that, didn't I? We are like... Bankrupt. Not that. <laughs> Generalizing though. Not Generalizing. That, but... but in regards to Spain's, you know, impact on the world, yes, we've heard the stories. Colonialism was riddled in lots of tragedy. Many wars and battles were fought. Many died. Diseases were spread. No denying these terrible historical incidents. But, and this might be one of the most hard pill to swallow controversial things I'll ever say on this show, given the current social climate that we live in, but you have to kind of see colonialism in all vantage points throughout its manifestation. In a weird way, many of the things that you hold dear today and the people that that you admire and the ideas that change the sure. world may have never come about without ties to colonialism too. It's a weird paradox of chronological exchanges throughout history. I mean, for example, the wheel and beast of burden, like horses and cattle, were brought over to the Americas. Remember in the Peru episode, we explained how the only domesticated animal that could remotely help carry cargo was the llama and it could only carry like 80 pounds. Otherwise people just kind of walked to get around. See, like that, history kind of has a weird way of showing you that nothing ever is completely what you think it is. And over time, it kind of evolves into something you probably never saw coming. Yes, yeah. everyone likes to condemn past tragedies, but you also have to acknowledge that it's possible for a rose to grow from concrete. Like the invention of the first artificial heart in Argentina to, I don't know, Vicente Fernandez and Shakira. That's my little brief postulation on the topic. Take it as you want. He had to mention degree. Shakira, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I like, but I like that you say that. In a way, it's hard to judge that era with today's standards and that gets really tricky. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for years and I know what's coming. The Spanish people and our backstory Story have so many diverse layers. And luckily, we made a video explaining all about those various groups and nationalities of Spain. So just check it out right here. Click on it. Let's chill mm -hmm. a little bit and have some fun. Let's talk. We also have art and sports and many other good things. So art with the sports part. No, 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 no. I am existing. Here's your trophy. This is my trophy for existing. I love it. But that's besides the point. All right, sports in Spain. So without saying much, most of you will automatically default to football. Yes, we all know that soccer <laughs> is practically a religion in Spain. Their national team has qualified for the FIFA Cup 15 times, hosted in 1982 and won against the Netherlands in 2010. And of course, everybody knows about the huge rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Which team are you on? But soccer isn't everything for Spain. Fun fact, their men's roller hockey team scored 16 gold medals. Everybody knows Rafael Nadal's Wimbledon Nadal. championship in 2008 and 2010. Their national basketball team has won one world and two Euro basket championships. Aside from all the contemporary sports, Spain also has a rich culture of domestically produced sports. Everything oh. from patanque to Canarian style wrestling. I could fight a canary. I bet you I could beat it. I don't know man, those things are fast. The Basque country though has the most native sports out of anywhere else in Spain. You have things like Jayalai, stone lifting, hole drilling, wood chopping. That's my sport right there, wood chopping. In fact, Basque Country is where the running of the bulls happen. Uh, it's not really I a, sport, it's no bulls. a festival, but they love it. And there's been 15 recorded deaths, but they still love it. And finally, I know you were thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Spanish bullfighting or corrida de toro. So sport dates all the way back to Roman times. Bullfighting is kind of seen as a performance art mixed with a sport. The matador attempts to subdue, immobilize, or kill the bull in the arena. The Arabs, the Catholics, the frickin' Bourbons, they all tried to ban it, but it kept coming back. In recent years, the sport has yet again been met with a lot of backlash. In fact, it was completely banned in Catalonia in 2010. Well, I'm gonna get out of here, and you know what? I'm proud of this trophy. Thank you, Art. Yeah, people in Spain are pretty active. Which is actually uh, kind of funny considering that you guys have that whole siesta culture thing, and you guys are known for being lazy, like, <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, but I, <laughs> I haven't I haven't done my siesta in two years. Yeah, but that's because yeah. you lived here. No, but well, I mean, <laughs> we are not lazy guys, okay? Also siesta doesn't make you lazy. It recharges oh, you. Doesn't recharge you, no. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up worse than you went to sleep. Wow, that's only normal. Be wild. Oh, and speaking of stereotypes, what about the whole like nudity thing? I thought that that was something normal in the rest of the world. Oh. On the beach, on the beach. No one pays attention to that. Like, it's yeah. no anything weird. Nah, you can't be nude on the beaches where I'm from. The street, like. Right, right. So in conclusion, stereotype debunked. Nudity is not legal legal in Spain, but it's okay in some beaches. All right, enough culture talk. Now we gotta move on to Hannah. That's her segment. So now here's Hannah with culture stuff. Hi guys, it is good to be back. And remember that you can get 
a random Hanna t-shirt at geographynow.com. It has my face, face, it has my face on it, and it's better than Keith. Ernest Hemingway once said, there is no nightlife in Spain. They stay up late and they get up late. That is not nightlife. That is delaying the day. Interestingly enough, <laughs> they have one of the highest life expectancies in the world. Maybe night parties do the trick. In any case, Spain has been a front runner in arts and literature. So many people like these have made internationally famous pieces of literature. None more famous than Miguel de Cervantes Don, Don Quixote. In addition, so many world-renowned artists have come from Spain, including the Spanish Trinity, Pablo Picasso, Diego Velasquez, and Francisco to... Goya. He had some really dark works because he went uh, deaf and the Spanish Inquisition really hated it. But of course, you cannot forget Anthony Gaudi's architecture and surrealist Salvador Dali. See, that's really who I was thinking of. I was like, what about Dali? Really my favorite artist of all time. Spain is a hub of many inventions, such as the spacesuit, the stapler, the predecessor to the helicopter, the gyroplane, the wheelchair, glasses, foosball, and the discovery of the elements, tungsten, vanadium, and platinum. Now, just very quickly, let's talk about some cinema stuff. Explore the political climate with movies like Pan's Labyrinth, which is actually a Mexican movie, but does explore some aspects of Spanish culture and the Spanish Civil War. Take a tour of the beautiful Basque country by watching the movie Ocho Apaidos Vascos. I hope I'm saying that right. Is that right? Good enough. If you want to take a trip back to the Middle Ages and explore Spain's royalty culture, you can watch Juana la Loca. And everybody knows the famous actresses that came out of Spain, like Antonio Banderas, Penelope Cruz, Javier Bardem. Anyways, you get the point. There is a way too much film history. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right it, that now. took me but off a bit. I forgot more. about Watch the longer now, guys. Cruise. The first official spin off channel of Geography Now. And it has a spin off. Ding, 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 ding. And finally, Spain is the land of festivals. Literally, every day you can find something happening in some part of Spain. You've probably heard of La Tomatina, La Faria in April, Semana Santa, and one thing that unifies the Spaniards is music. Unfortunately, Keith has made his way back from Florida to Los Angeles. I don't know what to do with myself. I thought he was gone forever and he's freaking back. He's here to do the music segment. You guys kind of like him, so here he is. Whatever. Have fun. It's kind of chilly in here. I'm back. I'm back in the studio. My segment kicks not her segment. By the way, everybody, over the years, I've worn Rush shirts many times. Everybody knows Rush is my favorite band. Blah, 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 blah. Rush, don't sue, whatever. Anyways, so fun fact, and since I have such a love affair with guitars and things with strings, especially G strings, haha, <laughs> but um. <laughs> The modern classical guitar was actually invented in Spain. This is <sighs> actually a steel string. Spain is one of the very few countries that actually has no words in their national anthem. Each region of Spain actually has its own traditional style of music. The most well-known style of music that everybody around the world Flamingo. probably knows is flamenco music. Predominantly founded in the southern region of Spain in mostly the city of Seville. I highly recommend ch checking out Paco de Lucia, who's a phenomenal flamenco guitar player. I would have to explain flamenco music as a finger style on guitar. So, for example, said acoustic guitar, if you take these two, or sorry, these three fingers and you anchor your thumb, you kind of do this motion here. You can also, you like, use your right hand as a kind of more percussive. In addition, most regions in Spain actually have their own style of dance, which is called the jota. The rhythms in the dance either are three, four, or six, eight. It's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's basically the same thing. It feels faster, but it's not actually faster. Eventually, after the fall of the dictatorship, you had a bunch of amazing musicians come out, such as Rocio Jorado, La Pantoja, Joaquin Sabina, Rosalia, she's won like a bunch of Grammys. I don't know, it's just like whenever I watch some like Latin soap opera or something and I put the chick in the big dress, and he cheated on me. And then I'm just all like, whoa. So that's it for me, you guys. I would just like to say thanks to Paul Barbato for flying me out to here to LA. So glad to have you back, King. Oh my God, it's woo! great to be back, woo. I missed in and out in all of the glorious fast food that I <laughs> Thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, it's time to move on to the friend zone, shall we? We shall. Thank you for right, suggesting so, Jake, this, uh, man. This how is How do you feel about cool. the way how Spain interacts with the rest of the world? Because of the language, I 
feel like we might feel closer to Latin American countries for the most part. People think that we are not that good at English. And okay, I probably have shown in this video that I'm not that good at English. I'm sorry, I just no, had a long great. day, okay? You're doing great, you're okay? doing great. It's harder for us because we are come from a Latin language. Yeah. Yeah. So a German person is gonna be able to understand and learn faster English than yes. us, so. Obviously, Spain has a huge impact on the world. So first off, of course, in Africa, it's interesting. The area of Western Sahara used to be a Spanish colony, which is now de facto run by Morocco, but with a dispute with the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Although Spain has never formally recognized the SADR, Spain does host a noticeable community of Sahrawi people on the Canary Islands. And on top of that, the whole Ceuta and Melilla thing kind of irks Morocco just a bit to say the least. Nonetheless, they try to keep things cordial and every new prime minister usually makes a trip to Morocco for their first diplomatic mission abroad. Otherwise, they have very close relations with their former colonies, the closest probably being Argentina, as they have the largest diaspora of Spaniards outside of Spain. Argentina is a pretty million. place. And it's well known throughout the Latin world that Argentina probably has the biggest crush on Spain, so the more they get time with them, the better. Cuba and Venezuela are high up on the list too, Cuba being the last American colony to gain independence, and they have always been fond of Spain's values. Venezuela specifically has very close ties to the Canary Islands. They Venezuela is right next the to my island. Same accent, and half of everybody on the islands have friends or family in Venezuela. Back to Europe though, Andorra is like the Beverly Hills where the Spaniards move when they hit it big and want to hide their money. However, if we're gonna get really personal, Portugal is like the little brother they have shared every moment of their history with. And they love to see him try. Like whenever Portugal accomplishes anything, <laughs> Spain is their number one cheerleader. Like Spain knows they are four times bigger and have a way heavier socioeconomic impact on Europe and the world. So of course, let adorable Portugal have a Ronaldo or Magellan. They deserve some spotlight. Spain can't <laughs> When it comes to their best friends, however, literally almost every single Spaniard I have talked to has said the same country, Italy. It's no shocker. When a Spaniard and Italian meet, there is an instant connection. They just share the same South Latin vibe and code of conduct that goes back millennia to the Roman Empire. They can easily learn each other's languages. They approve of the other's food and music. They both laugh at stories of crazy dictatorships and underground mafia drama over a glass of wine. In the end, evidently, Spain and Italy are the kings and queens of South Europe. All right. And and in conclusion, I think you guys should take it away. I'm out. <laughs> we are welcoming. And um, the cool thing about Spain is like you have many different cultures within the same country. Yeah. So you yeah. can live completely different experiences. Ooh, we like to call it. That. That, I'm not going to say no. Wrong with that. We love that because we are social people. I yeah. think that's something that we need. A lot of those things I took for granted being in Spain, the rich diversity yeah. or, you know, welcoming nature. And once I moved out, which more than 10 years ago, that's when I really started realizing yeah. how lucky we are to be from Spain. Yeah, have some real paella. And <laughs> real paella. I want some paella right now. Oh, paella. Thank you guys so much for being in this paella. episode. And with that, stay tuned. Sri Lanka is coming up next. Huh, I'm going to have to check on Sri Lanka. Because, uh, you know, the island have a lot in common with Sri Lanka. We all play cricket and thing. <laughs> we win all the time, though. But anyway, man. I ain't going to Babylon too long. Hope you guys are taking a... Uh, care of each other i'm gonna leave a link in the description to this video so you guys can go check it out because i talk over and sometimes i stop it and talk so you guys should just go check out the whole thing but i ain't gonna talk too much you all take care of each other all right cool runnings. Yeah.